Hello and welcome to my bed or literally just my mattress and two pillows because I actually don't have a bed frame yet or any furniture. So it's another rainy day here in Los Angeles. So I thought let's just film while I lay in my bed because I have nowhere else to film. It is very interesting having a tripod set up at the end of your bed, I will say. If anyone were to walk in, they'd be like, hmm, what are, you, what are you doing? What are we going to film while I lay here in my bed with my laptop in front of me? Well, as you can tell by the title, we are doing another subscriber home review. Actually, we're doing a two-part series subscriber home review. So I'm going to do one today, and then another one is gonna go up Sunday because I got so many submissions this time, which is so fun and so great. It actually took me so long to go through them all. It was hard to choose, but I chose ones that I felt like I could actually give good feedback or advice on. Um, so it's less of a review, more like I'm giving advice, I'm giving design advice to my subscribers. So sit back, relax, go lay in your bed. And it's three in the afternoon and I'm drinking a cup of matcha and laying in my bed. I don't really like working from my bed, but today we are. Ashley from Chicago. Cheers. We're going to review your home first. This is a very like typical Chicago home and she just moved in. So I have some fun feedback for her on how she could start slowly upgrading the place. So yeah, Ashley from Chicago. When you first walk in, you see this really nice family room setup with built-in bookshelves on each side of the fireplace. And this is a room that has such good bones that you could easily modernize. I actually would suggest repainting the entire room. I would not keep that blue gray tone. I feel like it really outdates it and makes the whole space feel pretty cool. I would honestly paint it a warm tone or something that could really blend in with the bookshelves. Keeping the wall color and the back of the bookshelves the same or doing it all one color like, like this, I think could really upgrade the space. Replacing the knobs on the bookshelves will be really helpful as well, something more simple and modern. And I think to upgrade it, it will be super easy. Again, with, yeah, paint, replacing the knobs. I would definitely replace the cover on your fireplace with something more like this, something more modern. I think that swirly Italian Teresa Giudice look is uh, not right. So definitely replace that. You could even add some fun lighting under the shelves. I feel like the shelves are like the focal point of this whole space. So really focusing on how to make that stand out with paint, lighting, replacing the knobs, etc. Now, if possible, the one piece of furniture I would suggest to get rid of is that giant brown armchair. It's just extremely outdated and your sofa is already brown. So bringing in another armchair in that area or that corner actually would be perfect. It could still be loungy. It could still have a footstool, maybe something like this. I think having a more modern chair will really help because your sofa is, is fine. And I think it's really just the chair that really out, outdates it. Now, my other suggestion would be to replace the ottoman. The ottoman feels a little bit too dorm or a little bit younger in age, and I think this space could use some sophistication. Replacing the ottoman with another ottoman, honestly, is perfect, or a coffee table, something that doesn't feel like you've carried it on from your previous home. It feels like a little too young, in my opinion, but, you know, to each their own. These are all just some suggestions. If you really are looking to spend some money, you could get rid of the sofa and get one that doesn't have the chaise lounge. I'm not a huge fan of L couches that have like the chaise like lounge part. Obviously it's so comfortable, but it's more like a basement hang sofa than your living room. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan. So if you wanted to spend a lot of money, you could take away the sofa, get something you know that's just a nice three seater, still loungy and comfy. And then under the two windows, by the entrance, you could put two chairs with a little table in between. There's so many things you could do with this space. I think my number one suggestion would be to paint it. Next, we have Darcy. Good old Darcy. Hello, Darcy. Cheers, Darcy. I don't know where Darcy lives, but she has unique tastes and has some pretty cool pieces. And I do have a few suggestions for Darcy. <laughs> 
First thing to note is that dining table is really cool. I really love the dining table and it was really smart to put shelves back there. If you watch my channel, you know that I think you should have bookshelves in some room in your house. And I really like how they're white and they blend in to the wall. And those aren't even expensive bookshelves. Those look like just, you know, like regular Home Depot bookshelves. And I think if you get them in white and make them blend, it's perfect. So I really love how there's bookshelves <laughs> once again. If anything, you have the key pieces. I think there's just a few minor tweaks you could add to this space to make it feel a little bit more alive. For example, on the left side of the bookshelf could be a perfect spot for a mirror or a piece of art or just something fun. It's perfectly framed out to have something there. I think a piece of art could look really cool. I also think a very slender architectural tree on the right side, I guess there is a furnace there, but some type of greenery there that kind of overlaps into the window could be nice. Or you could just add some curtains to the windows. I think that could be great. The one singular plant up on the bookshelf I feel like isn't correct. So I would probably maybe move that down to another shelf or, or find another space for it. Or even a plant stand to the right of the bookshelf could look good with the plant on it. I think styling the top of a bookshelf is really tough. And I think a lot of people just throw up a plant, but I'd rather just have nothing and maybe a plant stand instead of a giant plant, which probably wouldn't fit anyways, so. And when you have a giant dining table, it's hard to know what to put on the middle of this, especially if you use it every day, or even if you don't use it. My mom and I always talk about how it's hard to style the middle of a dining table. I think candelabras is always a nice and easy touch to just kind of throw in the middle of your dining table. I think, you know, a cluster of bowls could look cool or a few different items. Right now I think, you know, she probably just threw a bowl on there and that's like usually what I do because I'm like, I don't know what to, to put on the middle of my dining table. So I think, you know, suggestions like this could be nice, a nice vintage piece that you can easily move if you're eating there or use it. That's why I like candelabras because usually you don't have to move them and especially like a lower one like this one and you never have to move them, yeah, so cool. Okay, moving into the family room. This is one of those areas that gets a little tricky with furnishing because there's so many doors that kind of split up the space and that's when you wish that TVs didn't exist, you know? In interior design, I wish that we didn't have TVs. They just ruin everything. It ruins the layout, it's the aesthetics, whatever. You have to have a TV. I'm not gonna not have a TV. So this room is a little tricky. First off, you need a rug. 100% you need a rug in order to anchor down your sofa. I think it's really important in any family room or living room to have a rug. I don't think you need rugs necessarily anywhere else. Obviously I like it in a bedroom. I don't think you really ever need it in a dining room. Sometimes, sometimes you do, but you need a rug. So that will immediately help the space feel more put together. Wait a minute, she doesn't even have a TV now that I'm looking at it. So we definitely have room to play. I would actually just get rid of that record player console or find another area in your home for it. And then you could throw in two like pretty large armchairs in this space going across from the sofa and then a coffee table. Yes, there is like weird doors in the way, but it doesn't matter. You can anchor everything in, not everything needs to be against the wall, pull everything in center and create a little sitting area. And if you do want a TV, you still could put a TV mounted on that back wall behind the chair so you could watch it from your sofa. But now this room actually really could come together nicely, I think moving everything in and getting some armchairs will make a huge difference. And then of course a rug. Honestly, you don't even have to move things in now that I'm looking at the space. Send me photos of what you end up doing if you follow, if you follow this. I'd be super curious to see how it turns out because this is a really good space. Now let's go to Morgan house. Morgan lives in Brooklyn and actually bought this space, which is pretty cool. So congrats on that. It's 430 square feet, so it's pretty small, but it's doable. And when I was watching this video, I really was contemplating how I would design this. It's a little confusing because the space is small, but I do have some suggestions. Okay, when you first walk in, 
She takes us into the kitchen, which it's tiny and you could upgrade it, but it's nice. It's a nice kitchen. I think something that could really make it stand out is getting a Roman shade in like a fun pattern, like something like this, or you could even get this Amazon one. I think a Roman shade on that window will really upgrade the space without doing anything else. And then on top of getting a Roman shade, which I think is really all you need, I also would get a little kitchen lamp right in this little corner where your coffee mugs are. Just get a tiny little lamp, put it right there, and then that's all you need in the kitchen. Easy. The bathroom does look like you painted it. My color suggestion, Sher Sherwin Williams Garden Path, and I think it looks so good. You know I love to suggest painting a small bathroom dark. I think you just go with it. Sometimes when there's a small bathroom, I like to actually keep the shower curtain open if, if it's like nice and pleasant and clean inside. I usually like to keep the curtain open. I just feel like it makes the bathroom feel bigger and then you're able to let in light. And a lot of you commented on my project I'm working on of doing a ceiling shower curtain and everyone was like, but you're blocking all of the light. And I was like, no, I usually like to keep the curtain open if the bathroom is small. That's what I suggest. I think I just think it looks nice. So you could do that. She did mention that the bathroom needs a whole remodel. And one thing that I do like about this bathroom is that the whole bathroom is tiled. I think that's pretty cool. If you could have a fully tiled bathroom, I love that. So if you're going to replace that tile, which you probably eventually want to, I would still do a full tiled bathroom, at least where they have the tile. I think it looks really good. And then my last suggestion would actually be to paint the ceiling that garden path color. It will make the bathroom feel even more like upgraded. Just paint it up to the ceiling, you know? This little dining area is confusing because it's so slim. And I like that she has a very slim table in the space, but because the table is pushed up against the wall and you really have no other option but to push it up against a wall, I actually would get a rectangular table that's slim, <laughs> a slim rectangular table rather than an oval. I feel like the oval, anything that's round or oval, when you push it up against the wall, it looks a little bit more unnatural. Whereas if you had something, you know, more like this, and push that up against the wall, it would feel more like a built-in. I still would keep it the same length as the table you have now because I like that you can have a chair on each end and then the two, so if you had people over, people could sit. Um, but I would upgrade to a rectangular table just so it doesn't look so misplaced. And then that's actually a perfect spot where you have that piece of art to put a mirror. Anytime you have a small space like that, I feel like a mirror really helps to make it feel larger. So I would put a mirror in replace of, of that piece of art. That art's cool, it could go somewhere else, but I don't know, get a mirror. Or don't, again, just my suggestions. You know, you know how it goes. Now for the living space. I think this space is pretty confusing. There's like a jolt out in the wall between the two windows. There's a furnace that comes out. There's closet doors. You know, it's, it's confusing. Oh, hey, look. She has a little bar, wall bar. I love it. It looks so good. And that's my wine rack, the stacked. Looks, looks amazing. Anyways, I think the sofa should go against this back wall where you have the mirror and this dresser. I think that sofa should be the center of that space and it allows you to kind of look out the windows, which I think is really nice. And then you could put, again, another person who doesn't have a TV, which is really cool but you could put that little dresser right in this little middle wall and put a tv above it if you end up wanting a tv or if you don't have a tv at all which is sweet um put a giant long bookshelf against that wall but i definitely think the tv needs to shift over to the other side and i think that's going to open up a lot of space and if you really wanted to purchase things again move that sofa against the back wall and then get to chairs. A sofa and two chairs is always like the easiest route to designing a family room that feels really put together and conversational. I personally love to have a sofa and something across from it. I love when something's a conversation area. So when designing your family room or living room, always keep in mind having a conversation with someone. If you're going to have a sofa here, can you talk to someone across from you? Does that make sense? 
a living space or a family room should feel like you can gather in there and like play board games and drink coffee or do whatever you want to do. So keep that in mind when, when thinking of your layouts. I think it's fun to look at realistic spaces because then you can actually implement some of these ideas into your own home. And I don't know, it's fun to look at the AD stuff, but it's more fun to see all of your homes, you know? So tune in, tune in next week, Wednesday. No, it is, this is Wednesday. Tune in Sunday for another round of this. Just because I had so many submissions, I'm like, I'm not going to put out like a 40 minute video. Got to split it up. And yeah, if you, if you liked it, come back next week. And then we're going back to home decorating stuff because... That's also fun. It's all fun. It's all great over here. And yeah, that's that's the plan. I'm going to go eat a, a quesadilla now. So maybe I should get out of this robe too. This robe has kind of fallen apart. It's I've had it for years and I thrifted it also. And there was like a huge rip down the back. I got it repaired and then it just re-ripped again. And I went out to get my mail and I forgot that there was a rip and I was like, oops, that's an ass crack. But also it's raining out. So no one's even outside and nobody saw. So it's fine. It's fine. Um, all right. See you Sunday. Bye.